In this video, I'm going to talk about the many benefits of bilingualism in early childhood. So if you're one of those parents that's debating whether or not to raise your child bilingual, but everyone's been telling you that you shouldn't because you'll confuse her, this video is for you. Now there are some obvious reasons for being bilingual or for wanting to be bilingual. And one of them is to obviously be able to communicate with people um, that don't speak your language, being able to explore new cultures, but it's also been connected with having a more efficient brain. Hi, I'm Adriana. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. And this is where I help teachers teach and parents raise bilingual children. So if bilingualism is your thing, stick around. When a bilingual uses a language, um, the other language is also activated. If you hear the word can, you will probably activate words like candy, and candle. And this activation happens also in the other language as well in bilinguals. So for example, an Italian that knows English, they would also activate words like cantare and canarino. Whenever we speak, we tend to look at things we're either thinking about or talking about or hearing about. In fact, if I were to present you with a tray of food and said to you, um, grab the toast, you would probably look at this. However, an Italian that knows English would not just look at the toast, they might also look at a grilled ham and cheese sandwich because toast in Italian is just that. This is called language co-activation and in bilinguals it flares up all the time. In fact, while my English speaking brain is um, realizing that car and automobile are synonyms, my Italian speaking brain is actually checking the spelling and noticing that they're exactly the same. The downside is that dealing with all of this linguistic competition, um, our brain encounters difficulties. For example, bilinguals tend to be slower than monolinguals at um, naming pictures. They also tend to, um, um, uh, what was that word, what was that word? Yeah, they tend to have um, tip of the tongue states, which simply is that when you cannot remember certain words. But this is where things actually get interesting. You see, this constant battle for um, between the two languages to emerge actually makes your brain literally put on the brakes and allow one language to go forward and the other one to kind of take a back seat. This putting on the brakes is called inhibitory control and along with attention is just one of the many processes that make up what are known as our executive functions. If our brain didn't do this, we would be jumbling together both languages, making it not only impossible for others to understand us, but also for us to communicate efficiently. So every time a bilingual speaks or listens to speech, our executive functions are strengthened and the areas in our brain that are associated with these processes are modified. It's as if your brain we're constantly at the gym. Research has shown that bilinguals have stronger um, executive functions than monolinguals and actually perform better on tasks that require inhibitory control, like the classic Stroop test. Um, if I were to show you these words and ask you to name the color of the font, you'd probably get them all right. But presented with this, your brain is in conflict. One part recognizes the color, while the other part is concentrated on reading and recognizing the word. So your brain actually has to hold back. It has to inhibit the desire to read in order to concentrate on the color. Bilinguals tend to do better on this task because they have more inhibitory control. The cognitive control mechanisms um, necessary for managing multiple languages seems to have a huge effect on many neurological functions, not just with cognitive control mechanisms, but also with sensory processing. When both monolinguals and bilinguals are presented with a speech sound, both brains respond in the same way. But when that speech sound is accompanied by background noise, the bilingual brain has a greater response, suggesting better encoding of the sound, better processing of the sound itself. Higher proficiency in a second language, as well as earlier acquisition of that language, seems to result in more gray matter in certain areas of the brain, and in children and older adults, even in more white matter. So bilingualism actually seems to affect the structure of the brain as well. Having better cognitive and sensory processing may help Help the bilingual person process information better from the environment, thus resulting in better learning. Research has shown that bilingualism can positively influence uh, attention 
and conflict management, even in infants as young as seven months. If you're watching this video, you probably have a young child and you may think that their old age is very far away, but your decision to introduce a second language to your child may actually help her age better. Bilingualism seems to keep the natural decline of cognitive function at bay and maintain what is known as cognitive reserve. This is our brain's ability to use alternate networks uh, to compensate for the ones damaged by age decline and thus um, enhance brain functioning. In addition, diseases that accelerate the onset of dementia, um, things like Alzheimer's, for example, seem to emerge about five years later um, in bilingual people as opposed to monolinguals. And obviously that would give them a better quality of life. So do you need to be born bilingual in order to reap these benefits? The answer is no. <laughs> you can actually benefit from bilingualism even if you learn a second language later on in life. But whether you're raising a bilingual child or not, there are some tweaks that you can make in your own language to improve your child's development. And you'll find them on the video that's on your screen right there. Thanks for watching.